And we are live on radio in five, four, three. And we are back, folks, here on the Michigan Insider Sports Talk 1050 WTKA online at WTKA.com. And we are back with that man they call DG. They said, where are you? Where's Sam? Where's DG? Sam, were, were you slipping on your job? Bringing you? First of all, DG was otherwise occupied. Second of all, I had to, you know, you got to be, be very intentional about handling some things on the home front. But we're here now. We're here now with DG. DG on the heels of watching his alma mater win a national championship. His predictions come true. Patting himself on the back, popping his collar a little bit. DG, how you doing? Uh, I'm doing great, you know, just just picking things and everything happening exactly how I had foreseen it. You know, I feel like uh, Nostradamus at this point. And uh, at this point, Sam, we just got to quit because there's no way we're going to get it right like this again. <laughs> like, so perfect in every way, you know. Yeah, man, it was a, a fantastic ride. Monday morning quarterback brought to you by our friends at Grand Traverse Resort and Spa. No truer north than the north of the GTR. And, you know, we could take it back to the first – Wolverine weekend where we had JJ up there and we kind of talked about some of the things that he needed to take to the next level and everything that was pointed out on the field. He always had the leadership piece, but that went to another level to the, to the, I call it the DG element where your team sees that. Listen, man, there is no, now we can say it. So he hurts his knee DG. He hurts his knee. Uh, it was his plant leg. And, uh, you know, uh, Kirk Campbell, he kind of talked about it at the Rose Bowl. He said he couldn't put weight on it. So we got, we trying to call plays and kind of make him, make it easier for him to make off platform throws. But he was in so much pain. We talked about he was crying at halftime. You know, when your team sees you do that, sees you put it on the line to that level, man, even if they already have a tremendous amount of respect, uh, respect for you, it's the kind of thing that takes it to another level and that emotional sort of resiliency of the of the team goes to another level as well. Yeah, 100%. Um, you know, when when you're hurt like how he was hurt for for what Michigan was trying to do in 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 that game, he could have not played and they still would have won. Right? And so when your team sees you kind of suck it up because the thing is him being a threat helped a lot, right? Him being a threat helped on a lot of different runs uh, that they, that were successful and different things like that. So he has to be out there whether he's hurt or not. And not only that, he's going to have to make a couple plays, not a whole bunch, a couple plays to make sure that, you know, you keep teams honest and all these different things. And he was able to do it. Um, the, he calls the, the DG piece. <laughs> and he showed a, a, a tremendous amount of tough, toughness this season, and uh, I just really think that his teammates, him being a leader and them believing in him really helped everything that kind of transpired this season. And they needed it, right, because so much outside noise and different things like that, they had plenty to focus on inside, and I think that's a big part of the reason why they were able to stay focused. Yeah, I, I, he will always go down from a leadership perspective. Uh, quarterback in perspective. I mean, you, you so Jim R. Arbaugh already said he's the greatest Michigan quarterback ever. He's a former quarterback. You're a former quarterback. You agree with that sentiment? Yeah, I mean, you, you have to look at a lot of different things, obviously, just because um, Chad Haney's stats are crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? His stats, and because, and, you know, he, he played all four years, and, you know, it's, it's going to be hard to catch him. But as far as, like, resume and winning, Oh, it's not even close. It's not even close. And, you know, obviously you got quarterbacks that were really good back in the day, but, you know, they weren't actually playing quarterback, right? They were it's more like wing T, all that kind of stuff. But dropping back, playing quarterback, all the things that it encompasses, I think he did such an amazing job that if, if he's not the best ever, you got to make sure you put him in a conversation every single time. A conversation can't be had without him uh, being in it, for sure. 27-1 and one is crazy. Well... That is in one is crazy. Yeah, he's 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 <laughs> like, I mean, I remember when I heard that his knee was, was hurt because I, you know, you're trying to figure out 
what it is and the play calling. And, and I was told that when his D got hurt, he told every look, <laughs> he, called, he called his dad and he said, listen, got to get an MRI. I'm playing. Yeah. Before, got to get an MRI. I'm playing. It was like, <laughs> it's like that. Just so we're clear, I'm grown and I'm making this decision. <laughs> And I'll be participating in this some more again. <laughs> right, man. The things that you know after the fact, things that we hear after the fact. So one of the big reasons why that's possible, and I led with the quarterback because it's Monday morning quarterback. We got to, right? But none of this is possible without true complimentary football. Of course, they ran the football, but this defense, DG, and I want you to talk about it from a quarterback perspective. This defense is like that or was like that. The defense, as we saw over the course of the season, and Jesse Minter. Man, Jesse yeah. Minter is that dude, DG. Uh, tell me what you saw from a quarterback perspective when you watch quarterbacks trying to dissect that coverage or avoid the pressure that he was bringing. It was ter- <clears throat> It was terrifying. Terrifying. That defense was so good all season. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I talked to uh, Joshua Perry. He used to be on Big Ten Network. Now he's on uh, NBC. Uh, we did a show last week together. And we had a topic where we kind of said, what does this defense remind you of? And he said uh, the 20, was it 2013? Yeah, 2013 Michigan State defense, right? Number one in the country. And the stats are very similar, um, except I, I kind of added with a much better back end. Yeah. Right? That Michigan State back end wasn't very good, right? They could be had at every turn. <laughs> but they were just so good at getting pressure up front that you couldn't expose how bad they were. And then as soon as they play a team with some speed and, and that can block, good night. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so a lot of people thought that about this Michigan defense where, okay, yeah, they're good in the Big Ten. When they start seeing this speed of the SEC and, and, and the passing prowess of, of these other teams, these passing teams, they won't be as good. because and, and that thought process, if you don't study the film and study how they play and all that, I can understand it because – when you averaged out the offenses, the passing offenses that they played against, it averaged out to about 88th, right? So uh, throughout the season, you average them all out. I think the highest was like Maryland or something, which was like 20-something, right? Maybe 15, top 15, or not even top 15. I think it was like 20-something, right? And so that's the best defense, you, I mean, the best offensive passing attack that you played, and obviously you did well in what, what have you. So when everybody's looking at it like, well, they didn't play anybody. Of course they're number one. Right. And so I think that put a chip on their shoulder, too. All right. Well, they were going to show um, we're the best defense in the country by a long shot. And you're going to have to put us in the conversation with all the best defenses in the history of college football. All right. That's how good they were. And uh, Jesse Mitchell's ability to throughout an entire football season still bring new stuff. All right. So you use all this stuff. You- but then you get to these big games, and it's like you got new stuff, right? Ohio State game, you hear receivers talking about, oh, I've never seen this, right? Uh, um, Alabama game, you can see that offensive line struggling. What, what front is this? What are they doing? I didn't see this on film. And then you get to Washington where they only sacked the quarterback one time, but I guarantee you he had a longer day than Jalen Miro ever had. <laughs> you sacked Jalen Miro five times in the first half, and it, it paled in comparison to the way they hit Michael Penix on almost every single passing play, that is terrifying. You're not even getting sacked, and you're just getting hit over and over and over again. It's not like love taps, right? They are punishing you. Um, it was a punishing, violent defense. I, I remember telling you the story when I went down on the field. Uh, I forgot what game it was. I think it might have been Bowling Green. And and I'm watching, and, and you know, I was kind of confused because – I'm like, there's no way I played in this. There's no way. There's no way we were moving this fast, right? This defense was flying to the ball with reckless abandon. I mean, guys are stood up. The play's pretty much over. And you will see Makari Page flying in as fast as he can to hit the dude. And I'm just like, who, what kind of crazy person do you have to be to run that fast into things? I, I, I could have never played defense. And this defense was exceptional. Uh, and they deserve an applause. And, and next year, man... I, with the guys that are coming back, and you know they got guys in the stable that are waiting for opportunity, the addition of, of Barham from um, Maryland, 
who I look at as one of the best, the absolute best linebackers in America. Not only the Big Ten, but in America. And when I tell you his sideline to sideline speed, his overall speed is going to make this defense extremely fast. Not to mention you're putting him into that mentor kind of uh, defensive scheme. He is going to have he, – he can cover in the passing game. He's one of the best blitzers in the Big Ten, right? Put him on the edge. He's a middle linebacker. You put him on the edge, he's one of the best pass rushers in the Big Ten. So this this defense might have gotten even more dangerous with additions like that. And obviously the additions are done, right? They're going to get more pieces and different things like that. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to see it, honestly. And we might have to start doing some defense. I don't know. Yeah, no. It's going to be fun, man. Listen, you know, it. as good as Mike McDonald was, I think Jesse Minter is on another level. And I this is not just my novice opinion. I'm, I'm taking expert opinions to form mine. And I remember after two games, Vance watching Jesse Minter, he said, this is a back end guy, ain't it? And I said, what do you mean? He said, the way, the way his coverages match his pressure, right? You know, a lot of a lot of box guys, whether they be D line, harder. They don't harder. really know what the defensive backs need. Yeah, yeah. How how do you marry coverage with pressure? Is they they aren't always connected or as connected as they were with with Jesse Minter and Mike Elston said he said I've never been a guy and then his his ability to call games. He said I've never been around a guy in all my years of coaching who knows when to make the right call. And then to your point where you said all these different bringing something new, I was told they had 30 coverage variations against Washington, right? 30, right? And so the think about the only time he had guys running free was when they, when they bust, when they busted, right? Mm-hmm. The one time in the first half where it was, it was, um, it was Rob Moore and Will, Will was cloud, you know, and Rob was covered three. And then there was a similar bust with, with Will and Mikey in the second half, and Mikey chased it down after there was a bust on that one. Yeah. But if you got 30 coverage variations, you're going you gonna to have Every once in a while, box. and you just hope you don't have to pay for it, right? Every once in a while, you'll, get, you'll see a guy open or whatever, and you hope you don't have to pay for it, and they didn't have to pay for it, uh, sorry, in, uh, a lot. So, I mean, it, it was fun to watch, man. He he is really, really good. He's really good. Yeah, he's, he's elite, and so, you know, the the – the watch is on Jim Harbaugh. What Jim Harbaugh is going to do, I'm going to get your, your opinion on how that's all playing out, how we are, where we are. But to me, if you're war manual, a big part of your contingency, because you you, it, it was clear to me, as talking to people in L.A., everyone knew at that point this NFL thing, specifically with the Chargers, was going to play out. There was going to be a conversation before he ultimately decides what he's going to do. And so you're looking at who's going to be the next one. I think I told you Kalen DeBoer's name was being floated around something serious. He hadn't signed that extension, and there was a reason for it. I think Michigan was a big piece of that. He obviously went to Bama, but I even if Kalen had been available, I still think Sharon was and is the favorite if Jim goes to the NFL. But to me, the biggest contingency, part of your contingency plan is, what do you do, the play you make for Jesse Minter? Because if Jim goes, he's going to try to take Jesse Minter. Of All of these NFL teams, if Mike McDonald gets the job, Baltimore is coming for Jesse Minter. Pretty sure the Giants, with Wink Martindale out, they're going to go for Jesse Minter. If you're the Lions, man, I know Aaron Glenn is your man. You better be going for Jesse Minter. If I am Ward Manuel, I am going to make him the highest paid coordinator in Ever. America. Ever. In America. Forget <clears throat> college, college or pro. I'm making Jesse Minter a $3 million man. He's that good. And he would be that – I think he's that important to – I don't know that with with Jim's salary that you could – that they would pay. I don't know. Here's what I – I am making him the highest paid coordinator in America, period. And that is absolutely my thought process. If I'm – if I can't – if I can't get Jim back, I'm going to make sure – Sharon has his best shot at getting Jesse Minter. And that, that's not a guarantee, but that at least makes it more of a consideration than it otherwise would be if you come at it with that thought process. Yeah, and so Harbaugh obviously is not gone yet and still a chance he'll come back to Michigan. I th- so my whole thing was I, I was always – his his return is contingent on what J.J. does. 
All right, with JJ obviously leaving now, I think Jim Harbaugh will be leaving as well. Um, and a team in the NFL that looks like Michigan, all right, as far as great defense, all right, good offensive line, a uh, quarterback that is, has talent, can play, can move, can run, can do different things, but somehow they just can't figure out the Dallas Cowboys. Mm -hmm. right, and I know nobody's talking about that for Jim Harbaugh right now, but I think that would be the most attractive, right? They've got they got talented receivers. They got great defensive pieces. I think that the Dallas Cowboys would, should and, and will be on the table for Jim Harbaugh as much as, you know, Jerry Jones, doesn't want to concede a lot, concede a lot of the, you know, control and different things like that. He's getting very old. And I think this is the last, this is the straw that broke the camel's back where they're the number two seed probably should be the number one seed, right? As far as talent wise and how they play, they get a home game. They've won 16 straight at home and the, and the, and the roll of the dice flip a coin team gets in and beat you at, I mean, not only beat you, not to mention I called this, by the way. I called that they would get dominated. But not only beat you, they completely undress you and embarrass you in front of the entire world to see. If that doesn't say, I need to do things just a little bit differently and I need to get back to Jimmy Johnson, the way that I need to get a guy like Jimmy Johnson who's going to have all the control, I'm going to butt heads with him, but I'm going to get another Super Bowl before I get on out of here because he's getting up there. Amen. I'm telling you right now, the Cowboys are 100% in play. For Jim Harbaugh. Hey, man. I hear what you're saying. You know you my guy. You know I love you. You know I think Fox has been making mistakes for years. Not mm -hmm. putting you on the main broadcast. Right? I've been saying it. Even when Reggie Bush was hot like fire, I was saying, no, he ain't. That's DG. <laughs> right? But I think you're wrong on this one, brother. My yeah. grandpa used to have a saying, you don't know fat meat greasy. You ever heard that saying? You don't know fat meat greasy. You don't know. <laughs> yes, that. I've heard this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it, it, Jerry Jones don't know fat meat greasy. How long he been making the same mistake? Thirty years, DG. Yeah, this thirty I think years. This, but he ain't. It ain't never happened like this. It ain't never happened when you you this Man. you are this much of a favorite and you poop the bed like that. He's never had that. He's gonna change because it's almost it's coming to an end. It's coming to you've heard his interviews. You see, he's getting old. It's coming to an end. He is going to change at least for one year and go back to how he was with Jimmy Johnson where, hey, I got to take a back seat because I have to win a Super Bowl before this is all done. I've done everything else. I've tried. I've got the coach that just listened to me. I've got the coach that's the office of genes. I've got this guy. I've got that guy. I pay him. I've done this. I've done that. And we still, we still can't. We actually lost. This is worse than we've ever been. I, I'm telling you. I'm See, telling you. DG, how, how, how many? The toughest thing in the world to do, Sam, is change, right? But it's the one right we all have. We all have the right to change. It's the easiest, but it's the toughest thing in the world to do. What hey. do you need to change? You need a compelling argument. You need something compelling to happen. I got a compelling argument. I, 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 I look out for you, right? Would you fair to say? Fair to say? Uh, I yeah, but you know. I look out for you. Yeah. I, 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 I don't pat myself, but I know I look out for DG. If we for had sure. a conversation. I said, DG, you coming up. You know, there's some things that you gotta what you gotta do this, you gotta do that, you gotta not that you listen to me on everything, but just giving yeah, you know, I don't see you at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah not, not, not like, not like <laughs> the the some of the broadcasting things I say, watch out for this, watch out for that. And I say, DG, you gotta watch out for Kim K. You gotta watch out for Kim K because <laughs> she, she coming for you, man. Your, no, your, she's profile, not. your, no, your she's profile, not. your profile get to that point. And I said, DG, how many? How many celebrity brothers has Kim Kardashian been through? She's yeah. been through a lot of them, right? Oh, yeah. A lot of them. You think she's going to change after all these years, DG? She's been doing the same thing. Can't keep a dude. Can't keep a dude. Right? Been through all dude. of them. Left and right. At some point, it's not the dude. It's you. Sam. Same thing with Jerry. How many... No, Sam. All right, let me let me help you here. Let me go here with you with Kim K. Kim K. Still as fine as she was twenty years ago, though. Once she get a little less fine, then she gonna start acting right. That's what I'm oh, saying. No. Jerry, like man, this messing with my bottom line. My fans ain't gonna stick around if I keep this. If something like this happen again, I, all the money, the bottom, because that's really what Jerry care about. Obviously, he want to win, but it's about that money. My evaluation, my my franchise is the most valuable in the world. 
Uh, that value, these fans ain't going to like this one now. Come on now. At least we got to win this one now. Hold on now. Hold on now. So, Kim K, you know, once she start to get them wrinkles, all oh, you know, she stopped with the filling up of the fa- – man, I'm just telling you, she going to start – she's going to be real – she's going to do a special with, with, with Gail King, and she's going to talk about how, man, I just really wish I could – nah, second chance, all that. She's going to be she gonna be on bended knee looking for somebody. And, and, and I'm going to be right there to pick her up. Say, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> she don't know no other way, just like Jerry don't know any other way, which is why – they might show some interest in Jim, but he, Jim Harbaugh is in a position now where everything, whoever put this narrative out there about Jim Harbaugh, right? Maybe some of it was true, but a lot of it wasn't, that he's he's difficult and, you know, that he he's not with some of these. He's just other, different is what it is. Well, but they the, the narrative is he's difficult and he hasn't embraced some of the modern kinds of analytics and all of that and, he don't really relate to his guys. You had some players like, you know, Richard Sherman out there talking like that, right? And who's the running back? Brandon Jacobs. Like a lot of these dudes was talking like that. He's went out. He's gone out and disproven every narrative or or corrected the 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 things that need to be corrected. He yeah. dealing with house money. He knows he got 11 to 12, 11 to 13 million dollars in the, on, on the table from Michigan. Right, not the no, no, there was no 10 year, 125 million dollar offer. But if he wants 12 and, half, 12 and a half million dollars, he get 12 and a half million dollars from Michigan, mm. right? That, that's gonna happen. He's one of yeah. not, not a money thing, right? So you go into this equation now, knowing and you got a, a successful model at Michigan, you got a hiring, you know, a hiring track that you're on, you, you've navigated the portal and NIL reasonably well, mm-hmm. like you got to roll it. So now when he steps in front of an NFL team, they know what it costs just to have a conversation. That's <laughs> what I think that 10 years, $125 million was about. It wasn't a, an offer from Michigan as much as the NFL types would have you believe. That wasn't the case. But I think it was floated to tell these NFL teams, this what you got to be willing to pay just to get in the game. All right, now you in the game. What do you got to get me to do? What do you have to give me to get me to come? Now yeah. you got to give me some control that Jerry Jones is never going to give him. DG, right. never going to happen. It, and I would have believed that. Uh, what time did they play uh, yesterday or whatever day? I would have believed that just before that game kicked off. And once it went 21 nothing, he was already thinking, I'm going to have to give away some control. <laughs> and it's probably going to be to Coach Jim Harbaugh. I'm telling you, man. And when it happens. When it happens, okay. I want a hundred and fifty thousand, or, or or we can sell a lot of coin right now for twenty bucks. I'm telling I mean, you, I see your twenty. I just I don't think there's any way that this is the the biggest, at least for me, the most difficult thing to assess is is there an NFL team willing to give him? I mean, look, he don't not no coach is going to be the GM. But are they willing to give him final say on personnel decisions? Because, look, Jim Harbaugh, his resume is so much. It's like these guys, these other guys, other than Bill Belichick, nobody's resume come close. It's like, man, everywhere I've been, everywhere I've been, I've won. I've turned and it even, And even, even Bill Belichick can't say that. Right, right. So, I mean, don't tell me how to build a team. Don't tell me the pieces I need. Give me the final control. Is there an NFL team willing to give him that? That's what I can't say. Pay him, sure. I mean, you just to have a conversation with him, you know what it's going to cost. But so, like they were giving like McDaniel, what, what, uh, J- what, what the, the 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 bad McDaniel? What what is it? Josh McDaniel. Josh McDaniel. They were giving him like autonomy, right? And so you got to think like if teams were willing to give him autonomy, who's proven to be a bad coach, they got to give Harbaugh some, no? Yeah, I mean, but see, some and the level that he wants, because look, he, hey, man, y'all want me. That, that's a big, like, he's stepping into these, this meeting with, with the Chargers and whoever else he meets with, but certainly me. Like, okay, clearly I'm interested. You, I'm not showing you nothing. You need to what? show me. You yeah, need to show me. Because I, I'm cool. Where I, I'm more than cool. Where hey, I'm. Is this, it's not one, is this not one of the greatest stories of betting on yourself? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
he bet on himself and he won, man. He won in a big way. When I t- just like, like you said, like usually, you know, head coaches they go into meetings and they present their plan and what they want to do and whatever. He going in and the team's basically got to present to him. Hey, this is what we can do for you. Please, God, this is what we want you to do. Please come to us. You know what I mean? That's that's a cool p- position to be in, man. Yeah, it is, man. So, look, that, that to me is what this boils down to. Because he has, I, I've said this a million times before, the man has parallel dreams. He said it before. He dreams of winning a national championship. He, he dreams of winning a Super Bowl. He says, Super Bowl is great. National championship is great, too. Now, he's won the championship. If an NFL team wants to give him the the all of the ingredients that he wants in place to pursue a Super Bowl, then fine. I think he knows he'll never get the kind of adulation at the NFL level that he gets at Michigan. So I don't think it's about the love. I keep seeing all this. You know, he's not feeling love for Michigan. DG? He don't care about love. Oh, well, I think he cares about love, but how? If I, I don't think he cares right, as much about love as he does about respect. Well, how, okay. How much love and respect? How, how else am I going to show you love and respect? And I'm about to make you the highest paid coach doing it. If not, certainly in the league, maybe the country at the this, end of this. But this is the thing. He's made enough money, right? So I think respect is much more important. And, I, and, and the respect that I think he's looking for, not necessarily love, but the respect of you, you already know how I feel about Harbaugh. Like when when you do him wrong or whatever, he don't forget. You know that. Yeah, he I, was not forgetting. So you know what what happened? Where you know you had the bad COVID season, and then it's like, hey man, we needed some of our money back. And it's just like, it's like it's almost like Denzel in Training Day. You think uh, you can do this to me? Oh, uh, brother, I'm see. I, and now he got everybody in, in Pelican Bay playing, playing basketball shoe program. So, he's, he's got people in the shoe program trying to get him and pay him all this money because he felt disrespected and he is going to take it out as far as he can. Um, I, Cowboys. So we got we Cowboys, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, Cowboys. I'm Cowboys. telling you. But let, let, let's play this. Let's I saw play the script. This tape. Let's replay this tape because, you know, in my time out, you know, I, I haven't really – I haven't really been on social media or the site very much. But one thing I did see was somebody went and pulled up a bunch of threads from my message board from 2020. And a number of fans, the number of fans in the 2020 season who were like, it's time to move on. What yeah. do we do with Jim Harbaugh? It's time to move on. Now, it wasn't every it fan. Sucks. But it was, it was a good percentage. It was half. It was a little more than half, I think. Well, I mean, it was a lot of fans who were like, time to do something different. Get him out of here, son. And then in your, I don't, in your former player contention, your frater- y'all are a fraternity. Y'all are brother. You, oh, they you definitely guys, wanted him out. You guys are stewards of Michigan football. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure you talked to your, your brother and you, you feel like y'all should oh, have. Oh, that wanted him out for sure. Yeah, y'all should, y'all have more say. Y'all feel like y'all should have more say than anybody, right? Yeah. And there were a lot of former players who were like, get him out of here. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a lot of revisionist history now. Lucky for me, I don't have to revise my history because mine is documented as oh, me not yeah. saying he should leave. I think he's fine, all that. It's a lot of people, and it's funny to see some of the fans going back and trying to delete themselves out of those threads. There's yeah. a lot of former players doing the same thing. I didn't say it. Man, there was a lot of former players saying, get her ball out of here. And then people in leadership. There was people in leadership was like, oh, you might want to move in a different direction. Yeah. So against that backdrop, it was against that backdrop that this deal to keep him was put in place. You got a sizable contingent of the fans, a sizable contingent of the former players, many in leadership saying it's time to move on. And so now, where Manuel puts together a deal that, yeah, does it cut your base in half, but it allows for you to make the same money, which he did. Now, what would it have been? His neck is already on the line just by bringing him back. Man, can you imagine what those people would have been saying if he brought him back under a different de- – that's why I'm saying, you know, you got to bring all the circumstances to bear. And there were a lot of opinions that were bucked in that moment where Jim bet on himself saying I could do it. Ward bet on him. Saying, okay, you saying you could do it. You know, 
obviously there's some changes that have to be made, but I know you can do it. And if it's me, I'm I'm doing the I told y'all I'm doing I'm being Alonzo. If I was man, I, where is all the people who remember me saying in 2020 we need to keep this dude, and all y'all were saying we didn't, and that's why if it's if it's Jim Harbaugh feeling that way, I would be like, how, how do you feel that way? See, I don't think this is about that. I don't think this is about that. I see all the people talking about the love. The love was shown in 2020 just to keep him against all of that negativity. To me, this was always about he's going he's gonna to see what they say. That doesn't mean he's going to go, but he's going to see what they say. I don't think that there was anything that they were going to be able to put in front of him before this, before hearing what the Chargers especially had to say that would make this not get to this point. Now, will an NFL team offer him that kind of control? I'm I'm skeptical that they will. I still think it's more likely that he comes back to Michigan than he goes. So I I, I have a rebuttal for the, you know, the the just letting him, you know, stay in the love and and I'm just trying to empathize and get in Harbaugh's head, which is difficult. I'm just telling you, it's difficult. <laughs> <laughs> um Think about this, right? So while you look at it, and maybe I don't know, I don't know if I look at it this way, but maybe you look at it as, "Hey, we kept you. That that's the love." But when everybody said we shouldn't, we did. Oh boy, he thinking, "Yeah, you kept me at dang near half price, like I'm on sale at Foreman Mills." And then also, who else were you gonna get? Right? It was too. It, 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 what, are you cool with going back to the Brady Hoke era of things or Rich Rod? Who are you gonna get in place of me? Back up. That's going to be able to keep you afloat and get you to the level that you want to do right now at this short time, you know, notice or whatever. You know, I, I don't think Harbaugh looks at it as love. He looks at it as your hands are tied. You had to keep me no, 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 at no, least no. one more year. No, you you said you said at half price. He got his full salary. He got the full salary. So the Four. way the way he achieved. That full salary was different, but he got the full salary and keep him. You, you, your hands were tied. No, uh, let me let me be clear. The way the way it went down was all right. You keep him, but guess what? If it don't work out, y'all both gone. <laughs> damn right. Like you could do that if you want to, but it better work. But like that's what I'm saying though, right? So you you think I'm directing that war? I'm directing at Michigan. You know what I mean? I hear you. If that's the caveat, I'm pissed. Like, wait a minute. So you gonna fire both of us? <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> right. So I, I mean, I don't know, man. I just like like I said, it's tough. I'm trying to get inside the mind of Jim Harbaugh, which is a weird place. I'm cold a little bit. I don't know what's going on in here. It's a wild place. But I think, and, and I'm telling you, man, I got to go back to the Cowboys. I'm just telling you, when it happens, I just need to just clip the clip. We're going to put it out. I'm the first. I'm telling you right now, they look like Michigan without Jim Harbaugh as a coach. Right? And I think with all those defensive pieces, obviously going to get their cornerback back the next uh, next year, Diggs, they are at the most ta- one of the most talented defenses for sure. Could be the most talented. Right? Find a way to use Michael Park- Parsons in, in a way – that is conducive to his success and the team's success. And then on offense, everybody looks at, oh, Dak's a terrible quarterback, whatever. Dak's a really good quarterback. Now, is he that guy? Is he the – should he be the highest paid? No, I do not agree with that. He should not be the highest paid quarterback in the NFL or anything like that. I, and, and do I even think he's top five? Probably not. But a top 10, top 12 quarterback is a really good quarterback. And, and Jim Harbaugh has shown that he can do it with a top – a lower-tier quarterback – let alone a guy that is as talented as uh, uh, Dak Prescott. And, and and I just think it'll work, man. And, and Jerry is tired. He tired, Sam. He about as tired as you are from the best week of your life. He is tired. What are you trying to do? You trying to turn a hooker into a housewife, DG. I hate you so, I hate you so crass. But that's what you try to do right now. Talk about Jerry oh. Jones. About to change. Stop it, bro. Him going to change. Him going to change, oh, Sam. Brother, no, no, no. You need to go find you a clean girl. 
church. Church. Good clean girl. Check them all going. This round of the night, how I'm going. Yeah, it's going to be some good girls, man. <laughs> Come on, man. You say Jerry Jones won that. that Jerry Jones was one in the swimsuit on, at that rally, huh? <laughs> he wasn't no good, good, clean girl. <laughs> all right, we got to get to a break. We come back on the other side. We got to look ahead. Look at whether it's Jim Harbaugh or Sharon or we know J.J. won't be back. Let's look at the quarterback situation for Michigan moving forward. They got a good, some good defensive pieces coming back as well. There's a lot of guys announcing return, including Donovan. So some things to dissect when we get the Devin's driving force report on the other side. Stay tuned here on the Monday Morning Quarterback brought to you by Grand Trapper. <laughs> One spot. We'll see you on the other side here at Sports Talk 1050 WTKA, the ticket. Hmm. <laughs> Justin, Justin says, shoot Clear program. on radio. 23 hour <laughs> lockdown. <laughs> you think you can do this to me? You got a present from Turnover Buffs, DG. I got to get it to you. The you Turnover know. Buffs? You got a whole care package. Oh, that's what I'm yeah. talking about. Yeah. 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 Some people. Yeah, got some turnover Buffs. It's a bunch of some different things in here. I didn't want to tell y'all where my where my stuff. You know, I got my snuggie on right now. My snuggie is nice and warm. You know, telling y'all, I was inside Jim Harbaugh brain trying to figure things out. I got cold in there, man. You know, All right? See, I see this. That I mean, y'all, y'all. You know, I'm only gonna say this so many times. How you gonna it, sign him if he don't sign it? Crazy. Right, right. You can't make the man sign. Yeah, which yeah, one to put, you wanted they wanted to put Harbaugh on 23 hour lockdown and get him to sign it before the yeah, you're you're assuming that there's something that they could have put in front of him to make him sign. And I think as we've gotten deeper into this on the inside, I'm not just talking about in the athletic department. I'm talking about you got you got three three sort of perspectives, at least that I, I seek out. I seek out the perspective from within the program, the perspective within the department and their perspective within leadership. And the consensus that I've gathered from the people that I've talked to in all three runs is, okay, this was all, he was always going to listen to. Because this I said this back during the season. If it's me, I don't sign an extension right now. Why? Whatever Michigan comes at you with is going to be there down the line anyway. Maybe more. Maybe more. Like, you got all the leverage. There's nothing – that demands that you sign this right now. Michigan can't say sign now or else. Nope. You got all not the left. The do it. They're not in a position to tell you, you got to sign this before the season. You got to sign this right now. Or we're taking it off the table. No, no, no. Can y'all imagine if Michigan had tried to strong arm Jim Harbaugh like that? What would y'all have said? There would be no, there would be no, I might be going to the NFL. Right, and so he, he, I, he, his office will be cleaned out right now after winning that championship. Right, so you can you can afford to see the season through, win a championship, figure out what all of the options are, and then decide accordingly. That doesn't mean that you would automatically or definitely jump to the NFL, but you would be able to make a decision with with more information, a more informed decision moving forward, and. That's what I would have done. And I love Michigan through and through. But considering that he has never been bashful about his Super Bowl dream, why would you why would you limit your options like that? And I think that's the, the consensus that I've gathered is he was always going to at least listen to what the NFL had to say before making a decision. I happen to think that no NFL team or the likelihood of an NFL team giving him the, the level of control that he seeks is lower than a lot of, you know, a lot of observers think it is. And that's why I think it's more likely. Yeah, I think it's more likely than most than, than the pundits, the NFL pundits think that he'll come back. I give it 50 50 at this point. Back on radio in about 30 seconds. I give it 50 50 that he comes back. I would, where are you on the, on the, um, percentages 70 30 yeah 70 30 70 percent of the egos 70 percent mm -hmm. i just not convinced that they i mean you're i think he made it i think he did what he what he set out to do he you know he did everything that the michigan sun should have done right he, he he brought michigan back to the not just like kind of back like back back like 
15 and 0 bag down. national champ. So, I mean, All the right. disrespect, the dream of when the Super Bowl, it's like it's the perfect storm to say, okay, I did my part. I'm going to roll on out of here. Back on radio in five, four, three. Yeah, we yeah, are we back. Are back. On the Michigan Insider, Sports Talk 1050, WTKA, online at WTKA.com. Monday morning quarterback brought to you by Grand Traverse Resort and Spa. And now it's time for the Driving Force Report, brought to you by Golden Limousine. With Golden Limo at the wheel and Devin on the mic, they always get you to your destination, where you need to go every single time. And so now we know Michigan will forge ahead with a different quarterback. Don't necessarily know what the head coaching scenario is going to be, but we know what the quarterback situation is not going to be. And that's J.J. McCarthy off to the NFL. You know, it's interesting. I want you to evaluate, kind of put yourself in his his head for a second, deciding to go and kind of projecting where he is in the draft uh, quickly. Because I think it was, in the end, at the end of the day, it was mostly a decision about, hey, you know, at this point, probably could get more of my development in the NFL and get paid, I'm going to be a first round pick probably somewhere in the, in the teens to, to the twenties. I wonder what you think about that. Uh, the unfortunate circumstance is we never really got to see how much NIL could have impacted this. I'm not saying that there was a substantial NIL offer in front of him that he would have come back, but I, I just regret that it never even factored in. It, there was never anything that even factored into the equation NIL wise to get him back. I always, I will always wonder uh, what if in that regard. Well, so the thing for JJ, in my opinion, first of all, he he, he fulfilled all his promises, right? Similar to Jim, Jim Harbaugh. Um, and over the last two years, he's had some injury stuff, right? One 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 of the injuries was a shoulder on a throwing shoulder, and then you got you got the knee, right? And so obviously his mobility is a big part of why he's so dynamic. And after doing everything you can, you got to strike while the iron's hot, in my opinion. 27-1 and one is going to be a different team next year. You don't know how it's going to go. Um, obviously, Michigan's going to be a really good football team, right? But 27-1 and one is insane, right? So you're 27-1, and one, national champion, three-time Big Ten champion, right? MVP of the Rose Bowl. There's not a whole bunch more you can do. It's only going down from here, right? And so... You know, when, when a guy like J.J. comes back for that next year, all they do is nitpick you the entire season. You can do nothing right. And so injury on top of you've done all you can do, I don't see why he wouldn't go. And so he goes, and for me, I think it's perfect because I don't think he'll be a top-10 pick. I think that he'll be in the teens, maybe even the 20s, and I think that's perfect. So many people, obviously, it's great to be a top pick and number one pick and all those different things, but you're going to a bad team. A bad team. You get drafted a little bit later, still in the first round, still good signing money and all that, and now your career can be prolonged because there's not so much pressure for you to perform because you got good pieces around you. You're on a good football team. And, and if he can get that, right, his leadership, his ability to learn, his 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 kind of – he's the guy that can sit and watch for a year or two if, he, if, if that's what has to happen, right? We, we've seen that he has the mental fortitude – and the team playerness, if you will, I just made that up. Team playerness, right? To to sit, watch, learn, and become the best quarterback he could possibly be um, in obscurity. And so, I think that this is the perfect time for him to come out. As much as I would have loved for him to stay and, and continue to win, because the thing is, last year everybody was wondering, like, why did you pick Michigan? Aside from I went to Michigan, well, they're the only team that played in the playoff that brought their quarterback back, right? Like that's. That means something, right? It's big. It's a big deal, and I think it showed in in the games, right? The the guy who played in it, who had been in it for the last two years, is the guy that ended up winning and ho hoisting the crown. So, I think that that would have been great for Michigan, but for JJ, I think it's best that he goes to the NFL, uh, develops, goes a little bit later in the first round. I don't think he falls out of the first round because of what he did at the University of Michigan. They just you just don't do that to a guy that played at Michigan, even if he wasn't that good. Right, and we think he's really, really good. If you're not that good and you go 27-1 and at Michigan, you're going in the first round, I'm sorry. Right, somebody thinks that's attractive. Too many people love Michigan players and what they're and respect what they're capable of doing. And then what he was able to do down the stretch, I think it was very important that he showed flashes of, hey, in a big moment, you need me, I'll get it done. If you don't need me, I'll stay out of the way. And I think that's an underrated 
kind of skill, right? So many players want the stats. They want the, the notoriety and all that, right? And so they get in their own way when, when the team doesn't need you to do anything and, and you, can't, you can't hold it. Like Josh Allen, like Josh Allen can't sit there and hand the ball off, right? If he's not a part of the game, he needs to be a part of the game. He's almost like a receiver in, in that right. And so J.J. doesn't have much of that, any of that, in my opinion. And I think that's attractive. But when you need him to make plays, he's capable of doing that. So I think it was a good decision. And, and hopefully he goes to a really good team because he goes late in the first round. And we'll watch and see how his career turns out. Yeah, you raise a great point. You know, if he comes <clears> back, <throat> and I've heard you say, and Borgia say, you know, he definitely could use more throws. Mm -hmm. But I think what, what's, the, what's the threshold for more throws? Mm -hmm. like Michigan's, Michigan's formula? It's pretty well said. It won, won a championship. So we're going to change it now? <laughs> yeah, so you're going to change it and cater more to something that will make him more appealing to the NFL? I mean, that, that would have to be a part of the discussion. But, I mean, you know, I get why he would think or his people would think, you know, coming back, how much more would it aid his development than going to the NFL right now, getting yeah. the clock started? maybe going to a better team, and especially when financially, you know, there's no NIL lure to bring him back. Yeah. I just I get why it makes sense. So let's talk about these quarterbacks. You got Alex Orgy, Jaden Denegal, who inside the program, this was one of the reasons why I think they were, or they were a bit more conservative with their approach in the portal before finding out what J.J. was going to do. They, they've been really pleased with the progress of both guys. And then you got Jaden Davis in the mix. So tell me what you think about Michigan's quarterback dynamic at this point, uh, DG. I think, uh, first of all, I think they will do something in the portal, right? I mean, at least explore it, right? You can't, in today's age, you can't just ignore it completely. I can't, I can't think offhand of the guy who, who, you know, seems like a perfect fit or anything like that, just because a lot of the chips have kind of fallen off the board. I don't think everybody signed. So I think there's still a, an opportunity to, get some different guys or whatever. But from what I'm hearing, and this was mostly, you know, I don't, I don't know if every coach thought like this or was it just Harbaugh. Denigal was a guy that had improved a great deal. Um, and, and they really want to see much more from, from him, right? They want to see what he's capable of. Obviously, I'm sorry to say this, but as much as practice is important, I, I can't trust you because you're good in practice, right? They call the State Street players where they practice, and then Main Street players where the big house is located. And I've seen so many guys that are so good in practice, and then on, on Main Street, it's like they deer in the headlights. Can't figure it out, right? Nothing like what we saw all, all practice time. And so uh, – they, but the, the improvement that Jay that Denigo has shown since he got there to now is, is something that I think is, is super important and, and, is, and is kind of a big deal to this whole qu new quarterback race – uh, I think Alex Orgy is, is a talented, talented athlete. And I, I really want to see him as a passer because if he is even close to what he's capable of because of his physical gifts as a passer, he's going to Heisman. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm telling you. If his, if, his, if his passing ability is even close to his physical gifts, he will win the Heisman Trophy going away. And this offense will be extremely dangerous. Remember early in the season, he didn't have good vision as a runner. And I, and I told you, I said, it's because of the reps, man. You can't – practice is not the same. You can't – all the vision that you develop, it has to be from game reps, getting to do it over and over again. And you right. saw he, he was running into people. He's running. I'm like, man, this dude can't see. Is he blind? Right? <laughs> then later in the year, he's gotten more reps and whatever. And you can see he's slowing down, speeding up, change of pace. He knows where to go. And so it was just reps. And so if he can do that as a runner, right, and improve that much, right, what can he do as a passer if he gets the reps, right? And so I think that he deserves an opportunity to compete, man. I'm excited. I am. So I'm going to have to go to some spring practices. I'm going to have to. I'm so excited to see this battle because they're good friends too, right? So you got these two guys who are good friends and, and are fierce competitors, one who's played more, a lot more game – had a lot more game opportunity – I'm really excited to see them. And then the wild card is Jaden Davis, right? You know, I've been with him. Uh, I've seen him up close and personal, kept in contact with him. Uh, he's a learner. He's a he, he, he's, not a, he's not a part of young go-getters, but he's a go-getter, right? He's a guy who's worked for everything he's gotten, uh, and, and his, his neck up is, is second to none. 
right? So you're going to get that aspect. And, and so I'm really excited to see him compete in the springtime, right, and see what he's capable of because, as we know, it's a transition from the high school game to the college game. How he transitions is going to be super interesting, and he could throw a monkey wrench in his whole thing and, and maybe become the guy and end up being a four-star uh, – or uh, not a four-star, but a four-year or three-year starter, right? You just don't know. Um, so it's it's fun. It's fun to see. Obviously, we would love to have our quarterback already for Michigan, but uh, it, it is going to be fun to see competition. And, and the one thing, the one luxury they'll have, they're going to go up against one of the best defenses in the country, right? So all the development will be accelerated. And uh, like I said, I think it's going to be fun to watch. Yeah, I'm excited to see an orgy with more reps because I, I, I think what you said is so spot on about him in the run game. He's a tremendous athlete. But I was watching him run in the in the championship game. It's like, man, this is this. I just, you know, he'll see it more the more reps he 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 got. Because I remember watching it then. It's like, oh man, what was what was that cut? But it was so much better than it was so much better. It was better, but his vision will improve with more reps. And then if his passing game, if his if he's if he can show us as much improvement in throw game, I agree with you. We got the MM Q and A. We're gonna do that. Off air, we're gonna do that in the stream. So if you are listening on the radio, get to the stream or watch it later because we're out of time here on the Michigan Insider. So thanks for watching or listening to another Monday morning quarterback. We'll see you tomorrow here on the Michigan Insider on Sports Talk 1050 WTK the ticket, the official voice of the University of Michigan Sports Ann Arbor Accumulus Station. Clear on radio. All right, so what do you think about this one, DG? There's someone who said, what do you think about pursuing Tawalia Tungavailoa as a uh, – and now he has to get his sixth year, but assuming he gets it, what would you think about adding him as uh, the quarterback? Yeah, so <clears throat> talent-wise, I think he's talented enough. I think as a, as a guy who's seen a lot of football, he'll be, he'll be better than he's ever, he's ever been. You saw it for, with Bo Nix, right? When you watch Oregon play this past year, you're like, man, he just looks older. Like, he just looks like he's already seen all of this before. And it's because he has. He's been there forever, right? And so for Talia, you'll get some of that same stuff, especially in the Big Ten, right? He's seen every single defense many, many times over. The only thing with me for, for Talia will be, can he get out of his own way? Uh -huh. um, Michigan is not used to turning over the ball, and they will not get used to turning over the ball. Remember, J.J. didn't play because they thought he would turn the ball over. He should have been a three-year starter, and then he'd definitely be the probably be the best quarterback uh, that ever played at Michigan uh, as far as his stats were concerned. Um, but if he can't do – if he can't get out of his own way with that, there's no way they can they can pursue him. But if he can, I mean, that, that's what you want. The older guy that's seen it all, and whether he's really good or not or great or whatever, he's going to be better than these kids. I can tell you that. It's some 18, it's some 19 year old, 20 year olds on, on the other side of the ball that he's just smarter than because he's seen more stuff, right? And, and I think that could be uh, really attractive to Michigan, but you'll have to help him get out of his own way in a lot of different instances, turn the ball over and, and doing too much to create plays when uh, something isn't there. It, it reminds me of the conversation that Cam had when he was about <clears throat> game managers versus what does he call them? Uh, you know, playmakers. Like he's. Mm. He even called Tom Brady and Peyton Manning game managers, but he said it's not a pejorative. He said, I need to be more of a game manager. So I always call it, I always call it game controllers, uh -huh. right? Whatever the game needs, you're in control of that. You do that, right? So if the game needs you to get out of the way, you get out of the way, hand the ball off, right? Get to the right run play, all these different things. And, and if the game needs you to make a few plays, you make those plays, right? You're capable of doing that, right? So, I wouldn't call Tom Brady a game manager. I would call him a game controller and, and, and Peyton Manning as well. And I think that's the way to be, a game controller, where you're in completely in control of every situation. And, and it's not and, – and the manager is the guy that's just managing. Like, you're not asking him to do too much. The controller is not doing too much because he knows that's not best for the team at that moment, right? So I, I like to use that term for guys more than, more than manager. Now, there are some guys that are managers. Right? who can't make the play when the play needs to be made. But a, a lot of guys that people look at as managers, I think those are controllers who uh, uh, can get out of their own way when it when it's time to win. Yeah, man. it's. I think it's a great distinction, you know, problem that Cam – and I fell into this trap. Now, I didn't hate on his his look and all of that. Thing. He was broadcast from his basement and all that stuff that people were saying. 
But when he said game manager, it, it, it certainly puts you in the mind of a of a K McNamara, right? That's a bum. Yeah. Say, game man. <laughs> I wouldn't go say. Wouldn't well, go I was say. saying bum before you said that already, but <laughs> it just happened to go into the game. Yeah. Yeah, and so, but but game control, and he came. And, and let's just be clear: Cam was kind of he was taking a shot. Okay, it was a it was a stray. He was taking a shot, and then when the when the backlash came, then he cleaned it up. Like, oh well, I wish I could have been because he didn't say that initially. Let's just be clear: the way that people came at him, which I don't think was right, that's why he cleaned it up. To oh yeah, I, I should have been more of a game manager. Tom Brady's a game manager, so now you can't look at the comment. But it was shots. It was, there were shots being taken because we've already seen him. What was it a year ago when he did the pro day talking about all these regos or all these whatevers? that are getting these opportunities, and I'm not getting them, right? So it was a kind of a bitter shot, and then the blowback kind of made him come back and say, hey, first of all, I'm an MVP, which is true. You can He can judge football just like everybody else can judge football, right? And he's actually more qualified, in my opinion, to judge football. But let's not act like he wasn't taking a shot at those guys. He was definitely taking a shot because he's thinking, imagine if you had a Cam Newton in that position, right, which your team could be. You doing that with him? Where'd you get me? Something like me, somebody like me, so... Yeah, let's uh, let's be clear. I'm, I'm on both sides of it. He can say what he wants, but he definitely was taking shots. But the thing about Ty Lea is he had to be what, what Cam said he was <laughs> on his teams where I got to make every play. That was how Ty Lea, Tagovailoa had to be for Maryland. He wouldn't yeah. have to be that at Michigan. Now, could he well, adapt? I, I don't think that's entirely true, though, Sam. I don't think it's entirely true. Just seeing them over the years, there were instances they had some really talented receivers. Right, so he didn't have to be everything to everybody. They had some talented runners as well. Now, offensive line wasn't Michigan offensive line or anything like that, but he didn't have to be superhero all the time. He just, from his earlier days, he had to be. But these later years, these last few, he didn't have to be that, but he, like, let's go. I'll just go back to Ohio State game. If he doesn't turn the ball over in that first half, they might beat Ohio State, right? They are right in the thick of it in the mix. And then at the end of the game, right, He, I mean, at the end of the half, he um he he runs out of time because just just amateur just throwing it in the middle of the field with no timeouts and it's like what are you doing right and so I think that that he didn't always have to be that but because it's like who he was right it's in his DNA because he had had to do it so much because Maryland wasn't a good team I think that's what he, it's hard to get it out of you right like you said like you said Kim K it's hard for Kim K to change it's hard maybe I don't care what the, the influence is. It's hard to change, and so for Tali, I think it's 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 going to be difficult to go from superhero with the cape on to just put on glasses with like Clark Kent every single play, every game. You know, I don't know how that's going to go over, but like I said, he's an older guy, and and that is kind of the way to go these days, and and it could help. All right, Mike Layton wants you to know, DG, that was me yelling DG at the championship ceremony. Did you hear him? Mike, it was fifty thousand people keep saying DG, and I'm just like, guys, first of all. Sometimes, like when I have those brown things in my ear, it, they're noise canceling. I can't hear you, right? So you're yelling my name, and I can't hear you at all, right? And so I know it, it makes me look like a, a kind of an a hole, right? It's like, why are you ignoring everybody? Well, I'm not. I can't hear you. And let's talk about this thing. The the fans on the internet, some fans on the internet, oh, wow, well, well, we're trying to hear the ceremony when the 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 announcer is announcing the names of people coming out of the tunnel, right? And obviously. What I what I heard was, and you 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 were there, so you know, but you probably didn't see this because it was on the broadcast, and I saw it. So I hate the way they did it, you know, as far as just going going by class, right? Because now you you're getting all these guys, and and the crowd, as much as I know, they didn't mean anything by it. They wouldn't like clap for people they didn't know, right, on the team. So you you get you know guy coming out, and it's dang near silent. One guy in the tunnel reached his hand out, saw who it was, and moved his hand out of the way and didn't let the player slap his hand. I said, oh, my gosh. That's crazy. That's like, come on, man. Like, every single kid that got their name called was a part of that championship because you, you don't understand. First of all, that kid could possibly be very important next year. And also, that kid was important this year during scout team and getting them ready to play all these teams. And so you just don't know, and, and, and fans should be – they just got to be better, right? They got to be better in that right. Um, yeah, it was, it, I did, I, cause I, I could imagine being, you know, freshman that now I wouldn't have to experience that, but a lot of my teammates would have, right. Just cause I was freshman quarterback and the next great thing. So they're going to cheer for me regardless whether I did something or anything or, or not. But what about my homeboys? Like, what about Jerry Robinson guys that haven't contributed as much and they don't know you, they're not going to, and, and that's, 
that's going to piss them off, right? And so now you got to deal with that emotionally when you're coming back and, and whatever. So I just wish they would have cheered for everybody. Obviously, cheers would be a lot louder for the JJs of the world, the Mike Sanders steal and all that. But I just I just wish they would have uh, kind of cheered for everybody. But, you know, that's just me. Next one, Glenn S. Edwards is very valuable as a slasher and home run hitter, but does he get you five yards on third and four? This is part of his evolution. This is part of what yeah. he answered this year. I think I think he's going to get so much more improvement by being the every single play back, every down back. And I, you know, I, I forgot what the one kid's name was. He played really good in the spring game, 22 or something like that. The short yeah, stocky Hall. guy. Hall. Oh, man, I like Hall. I like Hall. It's like he's living in obscurity, and I think he's going to explode next year because – Nobody's talking about him, but I was super, super impressed because he's the five-yard guy, right? On third and four, he's the five or six-yard guy. Uh, I don't think he has the home run in the building. He doesn't actually of, uh, of 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 Donovan, but I think Donovan is really going to be able to improve as a runner this season, and, and I'm excited. I'm excited to see it just because, you know, obviously his personality lends that he needs to be dominant, right? Because he believes in himself like nobody else. Um, I love that he came back. I love that he didn't just allow, you know, all the hoopla that's going on with him having such a great national championship uh, make him make a premature decision. I love that he came back, and I think it gives him a chance to really develop into that guy that, of course, he can hit the home run. Of course, he's a great slasher and can catch the ball in the back for all those different things, but he also can be the the four yards in a cloud of dust and, and get those tough yards that you need. Uh, and, and, and the person I kind of point to, I think Alvin Kamara. Right, Alvin Kamara at Alabama, I think that his issue was he was that slasher. He was that home run hitter, but he wasn't the guy inside that's going to do it right. And so with all those backs, right, you got to get out of there. And then he goes to Tennessee. He gets all these reps, right, reps, reps, reps. And he becomes not only that special ability to hit the home run, but now he can get inside and get the yards that he can and get down and whatever and read the linebacker when he's in his duo concept and all these different things. I think that. Uh, this is going to be great for Donovan, and and he'll really improve as a pure running back. And then all the other stuff, that special stuff, oh, that's just going to be icing on the cake. I think he's going to benefit from being the guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got to get him. He's got to get 20 touches. Mm -hmm. Again, they don't have to be carries, but I think he grew in his in his commitment to giving the play a chance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes too, because you know when we watched him, we talked to him about it last year. Like every play on stage, and you like that's not how that's supposed to be run. Everybody can't do that. And I remember I told you after I'm like, you can't do that. that's like it worked that time, but for the most part, that's not gonna work. You gotta follow the plan of the play. Now you are special, and every once in a while, but then it's gonna be a time where you have four, could have got a first down. You tried to be special, and now it doesn't work. You know what I mean? So getting a chance to get those twenty touches and see when and where to do that. It's going to be great for him. But, yeah, he was on stage like, yeah, you know, I know I ain't supposed to do that, but, hey, you feel me? <laughs> yeah, we were talking about that. It was a split zone in the, in the yeah. big team game against Purdue. And there were five yards play side. And he and I, I wanted to know, far be it for me to tell Donovan, tell Donovan Evers how, what right. he should have done on the play. I wasn't doing that. I just wanted to know why he didn't go where the he play didn't have a why. That's the problem. That was the problem. The play was designed to go this this way, and it was yeah. there were five yards where the play was designed to go. His he, why was I'm better than them. Right. <laughs> and he cuts back into two unblocked players. Yeah, right, and gets a touchdown. He said, "I'm thinking touchdown." Yeah. Now, juxtapose that with his first touchdown. In the Big Ten champ and in the national championship game, he over he overcorrected. Absolutely, he did. Overcorrected. Where I'm going, yeah. he it was a it was a um it was a zone run. It was inside zone, and he pressed that a gap. He, he pressed, pressed. So what I tell you, he pressed right up against the line. He pressed so hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, he pressed that boy, and then he bounced back. He said, "Oh, that's yeah. the railroad was blocked." Yeah. Right? He pressed it into the lineman. Back. It was like a cartoon. And it's like, oh wait, here's a lane, and nobody was there. Good yeah. night. Now, now I get to be special. He was like, this is where the play is going supposed to go. This is where I'm going with the play. And then when it wasn't there, obviously he bounced it. And like you said, special. I think as he gets more reps, and he doesn't have to worry about, okay, I get one play and then I'm out. I gotta hit the whole run because I'm not gonna get a lot of opportunity. Yeah. Man, think about it. he only got six carries as it everything he did. Those big plays, he still only got six carries in the game. Yeah. 
Yeah. Right? So he doesn't have to worry about that as a it, senior, as the returning guy, as the guy. Like he, yes, it's going to be hopefully Khalil Mull. You know, you got other guys that will get touches, but he's the guy. Like Sam, also, the thing is, you only get six carries because we don't know if you're going to be able to, you know what I mean? Right? We got to make sure because this game is turned turn into. All right, we're just going to run it down their throat because they can't stop us. We need to get four yards, three yards, two yards. We don't need the home runs anymore because, obviously, they can't play with us. Um, and so who's the better guy for that, right? And so uh, next year with all the reps, I think Donovan could be the better guy for that. Plus, he's a home run hitter. Yeah, man. Yeah, he's he's the dude. I don't know. What, what you talking about, Scott, man? You stop what? You got to explain to me what you mean uh, by that. Man, see, I'll be – I don't like, know. I, I, you don't know what the dude is talking about. See, uh, I block people for that. I block people for that. Don't leave. Don't because now I I, feel, I I take it as disrespect if I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, yeah, I, I have no no clue what he's talking about. Uh, get to more questions for DG because man, they start coming through so fast. I'm sorry for not being able to keep up my people with all the questions for DG. Uh, uh all right, let's go down. And we'll start getting more. I apologize, but they, as we were talking, so many questions came through all at the same time. All right. DG and Sam, do you? All right. Um, here we go. All right. Next one. We kind of touched on this. You, from what you've seen, uh, Alex Orgy throwing the ball, what do you think of him? From what, just from what you've seen of his arm strength and whatnot. Oh, he's a really good thrower, right? And so, obviously, we've kind of made a distinction of, of the difference between a thrower and a passer. And and that's why I was so intentional in my words. Like, if he could develop and become a great passer with his physical talents, his ability to throw, he he's going to be unstoppable, right? Um, he can throw, right? He can throw deep. He can throw. Like, if you go routes on air, he'll be just fine, right? But when you're playing quarterback and becoming a passer, it's just where does this ball need to be placed? Is it on the left shoulder? Is it the right shoulder? Not just throwing at a target. Uh, do I need to flatten this guy out with my throw? How high do I need to get it over this linebacker? Am I capable of getting it over this linebacker and down quickly before the safety? Um, and then you got to be able to do all that without thinking, right? Because you got to be thinking about other stuff. You can't be thinking about what throw to make. It just has to happen for you. You have to be thinking about the coverage and where guys are going to be and different things like that. Uh, th and that takes a lot. That takes a lot of reps to, to be able to do that. And so the, this spring is going to be super important for him, getting those opportunities to see what his arm talent is like and what he's capable of doing with, with, while navigating throws and being a passer rather than just a good thrower of the football. I think he's a really, really good thrower. I think he's got a strong arm, all those – everything you want from a thrower and a quarterback, I think he's got that. And so now he just has to transfer that into being a passer and and I think that he will be just fine. But the question is, can he do that? And and I think he's capable of doing it, but we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, he, he's, he said, I'm all aboard. JW says, I'm all aboard the orgy train. Can he throw a little bit better than, than Milton did for us? I mean, I, I – Well, I think that's a great example, Milton, right? Because Milton is one of the best throwers I've ever seen in my life with my eyes, mm -hmm. uh, literally, including all the greats that you might be thinking of right now. One of the best throwers I've ever seen. But as a passer, he's, he was fairly limited, and, and I don't think he ever really truly developed into the passer that he's capable of. And, and maybe he's going to NFL now, so maybe he'll get a chance to develop there. But that's tough. People don't develop in the NFL, right, because it's a bottom line business. Do your job. Oh, you can't. Good night. Goodbye. Right? So will he get that opportunity to develop is, is the question. But he's a perfect example of a, of a, th a great thrower, a great thrower, and, and not a very good passer or hasn't shown to be able to be a great passer. With Ricky Boone wants to know, with Clemens out, does that mean Samaj and Tyler are stepping to the plate more? Well, they were already ahead of Clemens. Yeah, see, that's a weird question. I don't like it. Yeah, he, they were already, yeah, already Clemens, ahead. Clemens I didn't play, and I thought Clemens was a really talented player. I'm sad that he's gone, but uh, when you when you know, when you know have an injury and different things like that, people get opportunities, and then they do well in those opportunities, and you continue to slide, right? And so uh, for him, you know, I looked at him as like, remember Nico Collins? Mm -hmm. where nobody really knew about him because he kept getting hurt. He had a little ankle stuff, and then he finally was able to be healthy, and we saw how great he was. I, I'm kind of sad we didn't get a chance to see Clemens be great, um, if, it, if it's in him, right? You know, I think it is, but we don't know. 
uh, and good luck to him at Oregon State. I prob- I'll probably have his games this season uh, and-, and get a chance to see him do his thing. Yeah. All right. Let's move on. Wait, stop, stop, stop. What is going on here? As the the messages keep. So, Todd Soika, will Michigan redesign their offense to fit a quarterback? Will the new quarterback uh, be required to augment a running offense? Well, it, m- most any quarterback will fit a running offense. Just You just have to teach them, hey, we don't need the big plays. We don't need, you know, the special stuff as much unless you, unless it's there and we and we we don't need it until we do need it if you will um i think that if whatever quarterback decide i mean michigan decides to go with they will have to shift the offense to fit them like that's that's just smart coaching right you don't you don't fit a round uh or, or square peg into a round hole you you make it fit for the quarterback if, for the one you choose right so if they choose orgy obviously they're going to be there's going to be more run implemented um, and, and remember Harbaugh said that uh, uh, Jalen Milrow looked like uh, a more polished version of Orgy. And yeah. people took that as disrespect. And I'm just like, he is spot on, right? He's spot on, right? Obviously, Milrow can develop more as a passer, but he developed a great deal over the season. And as a runner, he's a tank, right? He looks exactly what he looks exactly like what Orgy could be, right? And, and that's how the offense could look. And I'm not mad at that at all, <laughs> right? Uh, playoff offense, right? The goals to the playoff. I'm not mad at that at all. And 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 I think that the running attack for Michigan in the running back room is going to be better than what Alabama had. So I, I think it'll elevate them even more. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't understand how people took that as a slight, but I thought that was I, I thought that was Harbaugh's way of trying to give him a compliment, <laughs> which is hilarious that people think it's an attack. And he said, that's how, I'm telling you, in the mind of Harbaugh, it's a little different, but I thought he was spot on with that analysis, if you will. Yeah, I take that. I take Jalen Milrow. I'll take Jalen Milrow. I'll take, like, I'll take Jalen Milrow for sure. Yeah, man, it'll look different, but different can win too. Different, uh, can, and and I think uh, Alabama's shown that. Right? Yeah. How many different types of quarterbacks have you seen them have and be able to have success? Huh? Like they had one dude that played running back. Remember the kid that played running back, number Sims? I think it was. He was a running back like two a year prior or two years prior, and, and they went to the national championship with him. You know what I mean? So I just think that it, you got to be able to be able to do it different ways, just because they're you know players are different, and you're not always going to get the carbon copy same guy. Even though at the University of Michigan, every single quarterback is about sixty eight percent passing, sixty eight to seventy percent passing uh, as far as completion percentage, and they don't turn the ball over a whole bunch, right? Like that's the one thing that is consistent going from Jake Rudock all the way to J.J. McCarthy now. Every quarterback has been around that. If you go look at the stats, they're very, very similar, right? Very, very similar. And uh, that's that's what Michigan wants. And so but will that change here coming up soon? We, we don't know uh, because, you know, the conference just got stronger. You're going to have more games where you have to be dynamic at quarterback, right? You're not going out and beating Oregon and then playing USC the next week and then playing Michigan, uh, not Michigan State, I'm sorry, uh, Ohio State the next week. and all, You're not going to go play those games back-to-back-to-back to back to back with just, uh, in my opinion, managing the game, right? You're going to have to be have a real good game controller because there, there are a lot more plays that are going to have to be made, and I think it's great for college football. Yeah, we got time for a few more. Marty Cornwell wants to know, are we keeping our coach or has Ward messed this up? Marty, I think, and, and I'm, and I'm going to use you as an example because you have the question. Marty, I, think, I don't think Ward did anything. I think you messed that up. And when I say you, I mean you, the fan, that 50% of fans that were calling for Harbaugh's head were so much so were the regents and everybody has to say, Ward, if you give this guy another chance, you're both are going to be out. Right? I think it's the fan base and different people like that. Maybe not you, Morty, obviously, but your your comrades, your your peers. Former players, too. Former players, too. Former, my comrades, right? And, I, and I'm just so happy that I have this show so I can go back and get to the tape and say, no, I'm not the one that said that. I did not say that. Right? <laughs> Have receipts, you still got the I, I keep receipts. You know, I'll be having the receipts, but I think Morty, I think it's it's my comrades, your comrade, everybody who who kind of messed this up, right? Because if you if you leave them be now, also I think they might have helped as well because maybe Harbaugh didn't feel that pressure and he don't overchange the staff and all that and feel like he has to get something done. Because and, and and so this is where the the cowboys thing come back. I'm sorry, Sam. I'm on this cowboys thing. I thought of this this morning. So people don't change, right? 
Jerry Jones, he gonna be who he gonna be, right? Yes, what you're saying. Harbaugh changed. He did. Harbaugh changed, and Harbaugh was so successful in setting his ways. Now, now Jerry Jones ain't having so much success as far as his team is concerned. Harbaugh was having great success, and he, but something compelling happened. Where he had a terrible season, and whatever people say, whatever calls for the head, and he changed in a big way. He Shoot. changed the entire staff over all those different things. He changed, and I couldn't believe. It. Remember, we were confused. Like, oh my god, it's a little different. He is, he's literally changed, and I didn't think it would happen. So, if Harbaugh can change, I don't know, man. Well, see, but it is different. It, you know, to keep with your analogy, you know, you're, in, unless, unless you feel like Jerry Jones is like, man, I'm going to die before we win. And so I got to, I, I think gotta, that's what it is. That's what I'm saying. That's compelling. That's what I'm saying. That's right. super compelling. Right. See, J- Jim was on the, pre- and maybe that's a part of the metamorphosis that he was on the precipice of, being out, Be, when you're that close to being out, you know, mate, he was going to make some changes, but would he have made as many changes? I don't think so. I don't think so. He changed everything. I'm telling you, Jerry Jones is about to be out, and not out as far as getting fired. He's just about to be out at some point. He can see the writing on the wall, and this is not like mean of me to say. He's old. Like, he, he's even said it. Hey, man, I want to make sure I win before I die, and it's, and it's around the corner type of thing. I, I'm telling you, that's compelling enough, especially after what just happened, for him to change enough for Jim Harbaugh. And and think about how attract as much as Jim Harbaugh is just ball guy, whatever. He loves the fame and all that, just like as much as the rest of us. He loves to be lauded and looked at as you know that, like you're the guy. What better place? What bigger stage than Dallas, the Dallas Cowboys? I'm telling you, man. Right? They're like the Mich- they're like Michigan of the NFL, in my opinion. I'm talking about not even, and obviously I kind of outlined how their team is framed like Michigan, but I'm talking about the brand of the Cowboys is like the Michigan of the NFL. Yeah, it's crazy. In blue. It's crazy how, how the narrative is, is really taking over. I just, I, you know, I think that he is at the stage of his career where, you know, just like guys that's in their NFL possibilities, he does he does the same thing. I think it's gonna take a lot to lure him away, but it gets to this follow-up question for Les Pittman. What's the likelihood of the AD moving on if coach comes back? It's been well noted that the relationship is strained. Well, he's not just the AD. He's not gonna give up his job. He's not just the AD of football. He's the AD of everybody, right? He's the AD of all sports. I don't see War Manual stepping down. What he first of all, he's a national championship winning AD. Right, you know, just like yeah, I was, I was thinking they might give him a raise. Like, what are we, what are we talking about? No, I don't think he loses his job or whatever that question was. No, absolutely not. Unless he just says, "I've got enough money, I've won that championship. I don't want to have to deal with this no more. I'm sick of it. So he's I want to go." That's the only way I think that he's done. My biggest criticism is he's not enough of a look at me guy. He needs to be uh, far be from look. I, I just think that's he needs to beat his chest. Like, hey, while all of y'all were trying to get rid of him, I, I made sure he stayed. Yeah. So, yeah. what are we talking about? What are we talking about? What are we? What are we talking about? You know, yeah, he's not going to do that. And, and and you know, like, people, you get punished for that sometimes, right? Where people don't know how much you did to make sure this happened and and whatever, and they think, oh, he's just a guy just sitting there with a suit on and. And it's like, you know, he wears a little jacket underneath the blazer. That's how you know you got a lot of money when you wear the little the puffer underneath the blazer. Yeah. I need to get to that level. And think right? about think about how the finish line moves. If you keep him, uh, you just kept him because you because you're lazy. Mm-hmm. Right? Because you, you didn't have the, the courage to do anything the different. Guts. Fire him. You're stupid. What are you doing? You didn't show any loyalty. Like you can't win in that. Hey, I, and at the at the parade or, or not the uh celebration ceremony, it's like, yeah, we do everything we can to make sure blah 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 blah. And, and and Jansen says, well, do you happen to have a kind? He said, actually, I do. I have it on me, right? <laughs> and you know what's crazy about that? I think he might have. I think he might have had some of that paperwork in his pocket. You can't make the dude sign. And, and frankly, if I'm Jim, I wouldn't sign. I wouldn't either. I would not sign. I said it during the season. <clears throat> if I'm him, you no You gain one, nothing. You gain nothing from signing. Like, what do you gain by signing in the fall or before the season? Nothing. Because with the auto, remember, remember, it was like, oh man, it's gonna mess up recruiting. We're not gonna be able to have good players because of this. For the last three years, we've only gotten better and better and better. Um, it didn't. I mean, 
the the part that's being effect, that's affecting recruiting is that they're not paying these recruits an arm and a leg. That's the thing. And I think it's smart. You shouldn't because most of these guys don't pan out, right? They just don't pan out. So that's ridiculous to commit that much money and that much of your resources to one guy or two guys or three guys. Continue to do it how you do it, done it. Your your business model has has shown to be perfect, right? You did you did it exactly, and people are stealing that business model. Getting NIL together to make sure these players return. Go and getting older players, not shelling out so much money to guys who aren't sure things as far as, and it's hard to find a shoot th- sure thing in high school. They're playing against high school kids. They're playing against kids their own age or younger. Of course, they're going to be dominant. They should be at least. Um, I think I think that that's what's hurting recruiting, not the fact that he explores the NFL. Yeah, in, in all honesty, that's a that's attractive because if he comes back, that means he's got relationships in the NFL. And what is the ultimate goal for these young players coming out of high school? The NFL, right? So if I'm a guy and, and he's got a brother in the NFL, how many Michigan players have gone to the Ravens? <laughs> right? How many Michigan players go to – you know what I mean? So if I'm a recruit – Watch Mike say to be a Raven. Watch Mike say to be a Raven. Right. I, I, if I'm a recruit, I'm going to Michigan if that's the only reason, right? First of all, he's a good college coach, obviously, great college coach, right? He's going to be a good NFL coach. But he's got relationships that everybody don't have. He has a brother, a blood brother who has a franchise who isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Um, yeah, I would if I was a recruit, I would go to Michigan, but I've already proven that because I did go to Michigan. But even in today's age, I would as well. DG, here's a pressing question. Uh <laughs> Sharon Moore for it is got a couple of things. Uh the Vic says Sharon Moore is our guy. He has passion, i.e. At PSU. The Vic says, um, Jerome Moore for head coach, but mentor has to stay our DB at Ohio State and won the Natty. Um, what do you think? And then Steve Horn, Jerome Moore is proven ready for the job. He is apprentice with the best coach we have had and continue the job Jim has started. Sharon has that in him. So if if Jim does go, is Sharon the guy? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I think that Jesse Mentor is so important to what Michigan does. And I think that uh, that they will explore Jesse Minter as the head coach for sure. And, and a lot of you got to think about this, right? Sharon Moore is a great offensive line coach, right? Great offensive line coach. And so you want him to still be the offensive line coach, which is the most difficult position to coach. And then he's the coordinator too, right? So that's double. And then, you know, the head coach, right? And so I just think that it's too difficult for him to be as great as a coordinator and, 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 um, Office line coach, if he's also the head coach, right? It was difficult going down the stretch. Think about it. That's why he's so emotional. He's like, man, I am stressed out. This is a lot, right? Um, and I don't know if that's, but, but Jesse Minter, I think, was was the MVP of the season for, for Michigan as far as the way that defense was able to play and everything like that. And so I kind of kicked this around, not on air or anything, but I'll, I'll tell you what I was thinking, Sam. What if Michigan goes and Firstly, like you said, make uh, Mitchell the highest paid defensive coordinator by, by, by far and hires McDonald as the head coach at Michigan. Because I think that McDonald would leave his coordinating job at, at the Ravens to be the head coach at Michigan, right? And now you get two defensive minds like of that caliber with, you know, obviously Sharon Moore still being able to serve as the office coordinator and, and office line coach if he doesn't go get a job somewhere else, obviously. And, and I'm just telling you, with McDonald as the head coach and Mentor as the defensive coordinator, um, what coordinator, offensive coordinator, wouldn't want to go play with that kind of defense? Well, <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm, McDonald's I'm coordinator in America be like, I can win with that. With yeah. that kind of defense, I can win with that. I can yes, do that. McDonald has the NCAA thing hanging over his head, though, if he were to come back to college. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. That that would be ah, that would be tough. the limiting factor. But, but I, think I, that been, I, thought, I think that would have been a great kind of pairing. You, you no, no, but you you raise you you do raise a point. I mean, uh, you know, you got to look at both of those guys mm-hmm. as as head coaching candidates, right? Uh, if 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 you do go with Sharon or vice versa, you got to be part of your play, part of your mindset has Prepare to be for the other guy to leave, or 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 do whatever I can from a salary perspective, from a show love perspective, to mm-hmm. make sure you. There is not a better offer out there that that is not a head coach. Mm-hmm. Like the only thing you should make sure as best you can, the only thing that beats you is a head coaching offer mm-hmm. for, either, for either guy, whether it's Sharon or Jesse. And, and, and 
if we can't if you can't do the McDonald a McDonald thing because of the the NCAA mentor head coach and Sharon Moore, I think will get opportunities to go be a head coach somewhere, right? And so if he's gone, I would not be mad at Gaddis getting a chance to redeem himself and come. I mean, I, I guess what I wouldn't say redeem himself. He won the Big Ten championship, but with with K McNamara, by the way. I wouldn't be surprised if maybe you kick that around of trying to bring him back into the fold as an offensive coordinator, because I'm just telling you, man, as much as you know, oh, it's not him and blah, blah, blah. He has a great offensive mind. There's not a college in, in college. Co- it's not a coach in college coaching that will you have a conversation about Gaddis and they'll say, oh, no, he don't know ball. Everything is, man, one of the greatest young minds in college football, offensive coordinating and all that. So uh, him, I think Doug Nussmeyer who is a quarterback coach in uh, San Diego, is another name that is has been in the NFL for a few years, really helped Dak Prescott. Uh, obviously, he, he's helped um, Justin Herbert. I think that he could be a really good candidate, maybe as a head coach, but especially as a coordinator at Michigan as well. Yeah, man. I, you know, it's interesting. Yeah, it's sexy old Al Borges. It's like, no, I'm just playing. Al Borges <laughs> can't do nothing with nobody. Al <laughs> Borges needs to stay at home. Yeah, what you said about Gaddis is interesting because him, him and Ron are really, really close. Yeah. And he he really pushed for Sharon to be the co C. I don't I don't know that it would that it would manifest uh, because there were, you know, the way he left, I think, would, would impact things. So I don't I, I don't know, but he there was a lot that you didn't see about what his offensive mind is because he was he was limited. He the quarterback limited him. And I see. I would like to have seen what he. I'm not he gonna did. get into it. I'm not gonna get into it. I'm just gonna let you say what you're gonna say. It's very clear. I've said it enough. <laughs> said it he enough. Be limited by the quarterback. In terms of the championship, beat Ohio State. Yep. 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 No doubt. No doubt. So that was one of the questions. DG, if Moore takes over, who will be the OC? You kind of, kind of touched on that a little bit, but yeah. You I mean, know I think, that, I think that, that you'll have the pick of the litter as far as offensive coordinator, as long as they don't have a job. Or you can actually pull guys from jobs. Uh, and obviously, I, I think that uh, Gaddis would be an option. But you could pick anybody, man, because who doesn't want to play with a defense like this? Right? Who doesn't want to have the luxury of, like, knowing I'm going to get the ball back, right? You know how much easier it is to call offense and, and, and when you know you're going to get the ball back, when you know your defense is going to stop them, right? Uh, I think that they'll have to pick it a litter and, and you know, they'll, they'll have to make sure they do make the right decision, too. Because you can't have a guy going into a culture of selflessness who who's a look at me guy and wants to prove how great of a coordinator he is. Hey man, what's up with this, these chat people tripping out here with the with the likes in the in the chat? Um, we 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 running really long. I know it was the end of the season, which is why I wanted to go ahead and give folks a little more leeway. I got what Scott Mayhew was talking about. He was talking about the injury. Me talking about JJ's injury. So, Scott, what I just repeated, Scott, was what his quarterback coach said. Sam, the- Sam, 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 Sam. Why are you even addressing this fool? What are we doing? What are we doing? Man, right, yeah. Yeah, he said everybody has injury. What about what about the quarterback who can't step into a throw? What are you talk? What is he talking about? What about the quarterback whose shoulder, throwing shoulder is hurt? Is that equal? Is that equally weighted to like a little bit of a road ankle? Like shut your mouth and get out the chat. You probably didn't even like. He's one of the people that didn't like it. Why are you even putting him on the screen? Put the people on there that are here to support, here to you know maybe not even agree all the time, but be reasonable. Get him out of here, Sam. I told you. I knew you should have blocked him when you saw the first thing, and then you waited to see what he was talking about, and it confirms he should have been blocked. <laughs> Think of it. Think of it. We're going to have to go a whole next year with everybody d- doubting every single word, every single thing we say because of people like that. Yeah. And I'm sick of it. Hey, DG, uh, they want to know your cash app again so I don't get blocked, Ricky Boo. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, Gardner Devin J. Money sign before. Be clear that the money sign goes before Gardner Devin J. And money sign Gardner. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Bimbo. All those things. I had to block a lot of people this past weekend so or this past week. In general, it's good. It's always good. All right, folks. I think we got in most of your questions. We addressed the, the coaching system. Hey, who was that? They said, they said shoot, call Borges. <laughs> oh, hey, man, those last two. And here's why they were so spot on. 
his game plan. Vans, too. They watched. They were able to watch so much tape Yeah, heading into those games. It's not like all the other games during the season. Like, them dudes watched six-plus games heading into the Rose Bowl of Alabama, uh, six for Vans, all of them for Al, and then six-plus games heading to the National Championship game of Washington. So, man, when I say those dudes nailed the game plans, D, D. See, we're a great team because they nailed the game plan. I nailed the the the. I mean, the I guess kind of the game plan, but I nailed what was going to happen. Like I'm just telling you, I've seen too much. This is this is what's going to happen, and I gave Washington a little bit too much credit, honestly. Yeah, thank you, DG. Sometimes our fans. Are I agree. I agree, but not you, Edwin Johnson. Not you. <laughs> not you. Right. And I just don't. It, you know, it really it just bugs me. Like. This is free content that they're getting, no? Right? Where we are committed, we give. You know how much work. Like, I, like for me, for Sam. First of all, y'all, Sam don't even get to sleep, right? Sam, because first of all, Borges is illustrations take forever, right? So Borges takes about up eight hours of the day. He does the show. He does that the thing with me where I try to make it as quick as possible. Borges comes in, is there for twenty four hours. He got to do vans. Got to do all these people. And so all the work he's putting in, he doesn't get paid nearly enough. He's doing this for you, literally. All right, I'm just telling you, I'm not going to put y'all in Sam's pockets. He's not getting paid enough to do as much. Like, we're here, what, an mi- hour and 30 minutes? I'm not, am I getting, are you getting paid? I'm not getting paid for this. I'm, you're not getting paid for this, are you? I don't think so. Right, so if people are getting stuff for free and we're giving maximum effort, right? I got games every single week. And I download Michigan's games on my iPad. Watch them on the plane, tired, and I got to come work with the kids. All these, I'm doing all of this for you. That's it. That is completely it. Not getting paid nearly enough. Uh, and, and for some of the stuff, we're not getting paid at all, right? It's just, hey, donation, donation. Don't put no chicken bones in my cash app, right? And so when you're doing all this for the people, and then the people get on here acting crazy, I'm not tolerating it. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it, Okay. I'm not doing it. So when people get, you know, oh, why is he? No, this is so much work. That Al Borges has children and a wife. He watches more film, in my opinion, I think it's more, than the most, a lot of the coaches on Michigan staff probably. Like he, and I'm talking about in relation to like how much he has to watch. Like the Michigan coaches have to watch it. That's their job. He only just watches it but and takes notes, books long. He makes books on every single game. And I don't know about Vance's process, but I imagine it's similar. And I know my process. So people are doing all of this, and all it is is complaint, 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 complaint. Just like you complain about the team that went 15 and 0. Well, they could have did this better. Yeah, maybe. Maybe our show could be better. Maybe I couldn't, I shouldn't interrupt Sam's reads as much. Maybe I shouldn't go on such long soliloquies. But guess what? You're not paying for this. You're you're coming and you're supporting because you love Michigan. And we're doing this because we love Michigan. Right. So appreciate it some just a little bit more. Just appreciate it some because I'm telling you, it's a number of fan bases. And Sam, correct me if I'm wrong, whose fans are dying for something like this. And with, I'm just telling Sam, he needs to find some some people just like Connor Stallions had some conglomerates on the other fan bases. And, and he needs to start this whole thing and have it proprietary around the whole country. Like people clamor for opportunities like this. Every Michigan fan that watches these shows knew exactly what would happen every single time if they listen. If they listened and watched, they knew exactly what would happen. And then the following after the game, they knew exactly why, what happened, and didn't happen, and what could have happened, and what would happen in the next game. You think that that's not something that's amazing for fans to experience where now you are truly a part of what is being done on the field, right? You can see with a different lens. I I just, that's why I cannot block. Block, 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 block. I'm not dealing with it. Block. And I wish Stan would adopt it a little bit more. But he's got a bottom line, and he needs people in the chat. Uh, appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate you, DG. That was that was well said. Let's end with this. Man, Sam got bags under his eyes. <laughs> Sam, there ain't so many backpack lunches sitting in that office, man. Uh, no, nah, it's mostly family stuff. At this Not to mention he got family stuff going on, right? He trying to navigate. One more thing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Sam. I got to go. I got to go. Sam has real family stuff going on, right? Not going to put his hand business out there, all that. Sam was communicating with me and, and Daniel about dropping dimes and, and all these different things, trying to find a way to navigate this important family stuff that's super important. Like, I can't, 
also national championship. Also, I got to get this for the people that I'm giving to them for free. And y'all are, come on, man. We need to send Sam some thank you cards, what you need to do. That's what you need to do. Instead of complaining, maybe send us some thank you cards with some DoorDash, uh, DoorDash, um, <laughs> some DoorDash gift cards. Because I'm the DoorDash guy, so he can send those to me. He can keep the cards because he likes the sentimental stuff. You can keep the cards, and you can send the DoorDash gift cards to me because the work that's being put in for this is insane. Not to mention, Sam, if not for us putting the pressure on Michigan, does J.J. get to be the quarterback maybe? Let's just say it. We put the pressure on because we show how bad K. McNamara was. We showed it on our show. And guess what? Sam lost so much money because he was reprimanded because of what we were able to do and put out there. He was reprimanded. Am I lying? Am I lying? No. So, you know, Sam actually losing money doing this for the people, if we, if we want to be honest about it. Right? So we showed that, and it was it forced the hand of the University of Michigan. I will believe it to the, to the end of time, and it was the right decision. And now Michigan has a national championship. So y'all about to call Sam and thank him on the radio show. I don't know if you take calls anymore, but you need to call him and thank him. Go All right. All right. We go. Hey, man, that was a hell of a. Hell of an exit. Let's uh, let's get one more. Kevin uh, Monier or Monier says any insight on the O line? We lost. I thought Trent Tate would stay. Did we hit the portal? We have stuff. But they already hit the portal for Josh Pree. But you got you got um, you got my man from from Stanford, the big tackle, um, Miles. Miles Hitch coming back. That's one tackle. I like him. He's a good player. You got Josh Pree. Who's coming over from Northwestern? He'll be one. Probably Crippen at center. Crippen would have been the center had they not gotten Drake Nugent. Mm -hmm. So you got you got Crippen or Raheem. That's a battle. You got Giovanni El Hadi, who's been waiting his turn patiently. Right. And then and then you got my man, um, the uh the tackle that they got in from um from BYU. Mm. A couple years ago, whose name is escaping me because I I'm I'm tired, obviously. Oh, of so. course you're tired, Sam. <laughs> that song Rihanna made was about you. <laughs> work, 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 work. That's all we do. You need to take a vacation. I'm going on vacation, Sam. I even tell you. Oh, Gentry. Gentry is his name. Alex Gentry. Yep. Yep. yep I'm baby. going on vacation, Sam. I know I ain't been on vacation since the beginning of time. I'm going on vacation in February. So don't yep. call me. Yep. So that that would be my my five as of today, but you got competition. You still got – there's going to be another portal period after after spring ball where guys – We need, to, all fix, these we need coaches, to fix all that. All these coaching changes that's happening, DG, guys are going to go into the spring. They're going to see how they fit with these new roster, all these musical chairs. And then this this portal round after spring ball is going to be – it's going to be – there are going to be some opportunities. Mm -hmm. So – Think so. Nope. We'll see. All right, folks. We gave you 37 minutes extra overtime there. 38. 38. Did you just hit 38? No, listen. It's actually gonna... more like 45, guys, because we only do about 55 minutes of a show. The recording is actually about 45 minutes long now. Damn, Thank, so you. Gonna... Thank you so much. Oh, oh, and, and we forgot about Ira on the other side doing it's just as much work. Come on, man. I'm sorry. I, I forgot about Ira on the side. I forgot you were here still. Ira on the other side is making sure all this is because you know me and Sam can't stay in line, right? So without Ira, can, Ira, can we see you, please? Can people know who Ira on the, that's Ira on the other side? Because we don't do nothing right, and none of this works without Ira, right? Y'all don't even know he set up the thing and then goes home and, and sits in office and he sticks around a little later. I know you're doing this, so just in case we need him because we can't do stuff right. So it's too much work being done for people to be complaining so much. It's too much. It's too much. The team's winning and we're getting it right. Why are there complaints? Sorry, Ira. I'm my bad, man. I, you know, I didn't. <laughs> Appreciate it. Appreciate all the support. Listen, I'm gonna put uh, DG's his donation PayPal. Give him your give him your cash app real quick. Gardner Devin J. It's so it's my first name, my 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 last name, my first name, and then my middle initial. Gardner Devin J. And then I'm gonna put DG's fund the film study link because this is the last week of the fund the film study PayPal link. So I'll put that in the comment section as well. Ooh, you know, Sam, what, uh, what what are we up to in there? Is it something? Yeah, it's, it's climbed steadily. It kind of hit a little right. hiatus there. 
Yeah. But maybe here on the on the tail end, since I, I'm pretty sure people are gonna want the film studies back, they'll give it a little bump here down the stretch. So that'll do it for us. Another the last edition of the season of the Monday morning quarterback. We'll bring it back around spring ball. In the meantime, in between time. Enjoy steady dropping dimes because as I, as the great Stringer Bell said, we back up. As Destination Ann Arbor mm-hmm. and Gold Limo both came back with steady dropping dimes. So we continue over the course of the winter. We will get back with another episode tomorrow. So be on the lookout for that. That's going to do it for us. Thanks for watching Monday Morning Quarterback.